Good morning. This rather foreboding looking mountain right here is my objective for the day. Got a little bit of driving still to do yet. Not quite at the trailhead, but once I get there, I'll fill you in on the details. Alrighty, here we are parked on the north side of the mountain. I think I hike up this, this drainage here, up this wash here, and then I'm going around to a notch somewhere. I don't know if it's the notch, if, th if this will focus. The sun is making it hard to focus here. Come on. I don't know if it's the notch between these two, like, sub peaks, or if it's a notch somewhere else, but that's where we're headed. This mountain is called Picacho Peak, and there are several Picacho Peaks in the southwestern U.S. This is just one of many. I think probably the most famous one is between Phoenix and Tucson. Uh, I've climbed that one before. Really neat. Uh, it's I think it's part of a state park, and there are like metal ladders and things if I and steps if I remember correctly. This one is a little bit more obscure and a lot a bit more difficult to climb. As you can see from my backpack here, I think you can see that, I've got, got a rope with me, among other bits of technical climbing paraphernalia, and so uh, this is a very complicated mountain to climb. It's got lots of little bits and pieces, lots of little puzzles to figure out, and so it should be interesting. I'm not 100% confident that I'll be able to do it, or that I'll feel comfortable doing it alone, more accurately. But, we'll see. You never know till you find out, right? So check this out, I'm directly on, I think this would be the west side of the mountain. And I think this is the summit. Just very, very rugged country out here. And then we have this freestanding rock spire here, which is maybe, I don't know, 75 or 100 feet tall. Pretty impressive. And I'm continuing to just walk through this wash here. <sighs> okay, well, after going up that wash, I hung a left and went up this slope here. And I'm now at an interesting spot to where I can see where I think I'm aiming for, uh, in addition to a couple other uh, beautiful things out here. So I think that this is the notch that I talked about earlier. That's what I'm heading for. And to get there, it looks like you just scramble up this gully here, this kind of slot up to the notch there. Looks doable. And then to the left, this is, this is amazing. Look at these mountains right here. Just sheer freestanding pillars of stone. Really beautiful. And I'm sure the views of those will just increase as we head up, so let me take a swig of water here and then we'll continue our way up to the notch. And at the notch is where things start to get really interesting. Looks like I'm basically at the notch here. Just a few more steps. Okay. And this is where things get going in earnest. Well, I hope the camera doesn't fall over right now. It's kind of precariously perched on the edge of a, of a ledge here, but I think it should be okay. So I'm at the notch here. How long did this did this take? How long did it take me to get here? Let me check. About an hour. So here is where things start to get a little bit more serious. And so I've I don't quite need the rope yet, but I do have my helmet. 
I'm going to put my harness on so that when I get to some of the sections farther ahead, I'll already have that on and be ready to just go. Uh, but let me show you something here. There's something interesting here. This is looking out the notch the way I, I came from. My car is somewhere down over here, but I wanted to show you this. Do you see this green arrow? Someone spray painted an arrow on here, which I don't condone. You know, you don't want to go around spray painting rocks in the wilderness. That's not, that's not very uh, good. But um, there are a few of those on here. And so this one's telling me to go up and left. And so I'm gonna, gonna go follow this ledge system. And then from there, I think I'll be able to see the next, the, the ramp that cuts back to the right here. So first step, go left across this ledge system here. All right, and so this is where we start going up. I just traversed over from the notch over there. Let's go up, up and over. And I guess it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't try this at home. Don't do this, don't do this alone. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, interesting, we have another arrow over here. Let's go up a little more so we can get a better look at it. Yeah, we have this natural diagonaling ramp system that goes up that way. And then we have this arrow telling us that that is indeed the way to go. So this is green arrow number two, again, Unnecessary, but whatever. Then we have this this ramp, and I see ladder number one over there. See what I mean about this being kind of a collection of little puzzles that you have to put together. Like each each section is its own little obstacle. In fact, I saw this referred to online as nature's obstacle course or a natural obstacle course. This uh, this route up this mountain. And I think that's a pretty accurate description. I know it's hard to get an idea of the angle, but that's probably a, that ramp is probably, I don't know, a. 40 degree angle, 35 degree angle. What a place. Okay, up to the ladder now. Looks like it's been relatively recently replaced. That's good. Yeah, this is the old ladder. This is the new one. Is it anchored at all? Nope, just climb on up, okay. Excellent. Ladder number one, check. And the next obstacle is a little step across. In the trip reports that I've read, um, there was not a bridge here, but now there is one, so that's interesting. And uh, there's a nice, nice little gap here. Let's do it. Seems solid. Glad that's there. <laughs> and with that, we have another arrow also. Where is it? Yeah, right there on the wall. So let's go up and to the left here, I think. I think the next major obstacle is 
um, is another ladder. Wow. Look at this. It's a very alien feeling landscape. Another arrow here telling us to hang a right, and then another natural slope, a natural ramp. That is amazing. It's amazing that something like this exists. That's just this natural, this natural passage winding its way around the mountain just kind of switch backing its way up. I mean, yeah, there's a ladder here and a bridge there, but still, <laughs> what a cool, what a cool route. What a cool little adventure. So this is the slope here. The camera is completely level right now. It's, it's flat. And so this is the, uh, the terrain we're dealing with here. Pretty neat. Ah, here is ladder number two. This one, I can already tell, is anchored to the rock. I do remember seeing a picture of, of a ladder anchored, and so that's why I wondered if the first one was, but nope, this one definitely is, though. That's tall. That's a 20, 25-foot ladder. Wow, kudos to the people that brought this thing up here. It's amazing. From the top here now, from the, the uh, second ladder, I have a little hump in front of me here. I know that there is a false summit up here somewhere. Uh, this might be that, but I think even that is a little bit further on. So uh, let's get up here and see what this final summit ridge looks like. The view, I mean, the view already is incredible. Hmm, so I read that this is tricky. Some people call this class four climbing, which is basically like a notch below the type of rock climbing that would be, that would require ropes and protection and everything like that. But then I have seen people call this class five, which means, yeah, you, you really want a rope and stuff for this. And so there's just this like four foot section, four or five foot section right here that's tricky. And if it, were, if it were right on the ground, it wouldn't be a big deal. But here's the kicker. If you fall here, you will die. You will go hundreds of feet to the bottom. So can I climb this without a rope? Yes. Do I want to risk it? No. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the rope out and I'm gonna uh, do a kind of a, a basic self belay sort of thing. Basically, I'm going to tie one end of the rope here and then uh, tie myself to that rope so that if I do fall here, uh, you know, I'll probably fall and uh, <laughs> break a leg or something, but I won't die. So let's, let's retreat. Let's, let's backtrack a little bit and get that taken care of.
Okay, I'm not gonna go into the details of this uh, that's beyond the scope of a video like this, but I've wrapped the rope around this big knob a few times. I also put, uh, put some webbing around it. So this is my anchor. This is my self belay system. That's not what this thing is called a gree gree. That's not what this is for, but you know, it'll work. And then uh, I'm gonna climb up and as I climb up, I'm gonna feed the rope out. And yeah, if I fall, it locks up. So this will catch me. I have a lot of experience rock climbing. I've been climbing for 20 plus years and uh, I have a lot of experience uh, moving over rock. I feel very comfortable moving over rock. I could do this without a rope, but I mean, I have a rope, so I think it would be silly not to do it, uh, not to pull it out, given the, the consequences of a fall. So, all right, let's, uh, let's do this. I'm gonna be filming with the GoPro so that I don't have to climb back down and retrieve my, uh, my main camera. Okay, I think that was the main, that was the main move right there. Still got enough slack to keep climbing this. Okay, and there we go. So there are, as I expected, there are anchors up here. And so what I'm gonna do well, I need to go explore. I need the rope for over here. So let me uh, let me unclip here. Let me tie the rope off or anchor the rope off. And let me poke around a little bit because I do need the rope for this rappel that's right here. Okay, perfect. Let me get the big camera out and I'll explain my plan here. All right, so instead of me showing you what I've been doing with the anchors and the rope and everything like that, I, I just did it and now I'll show you, I'll show you everything now that I've actually done it. So this right here is the anchor and there's my shadow. Hello. This is the anchor that I made with the, that red piece of webbing, that red loop of webbing and then a couple, I think three wraps of the rope around there. And the end of the rope is, is over here and it comes up over this way and there are a few bolts on top here that form another anchor. A bolt here, a bolt here, and these two bolts are connected. This, this black cord and this cord right here, these were already here. And then I've connected those to a third bolt that I found way over on the side over there. And so that continues on, the rope continues on over this way, where there's another anchor consisting of a single bolt. That's this bolt right here, and the rope continues, and the other end of the rope, so this is a 16 me uh, 60 meter or 200 foot rope, the other end goes down, and you can see it piled up right there. That is the end of the rope. And so next, the final Basically the final move here is to rappel down this strand of rope. And again, I have multiple bolts kind of all in a line here, multiple anchors. So I'm gonna rappel down and then from there, I can finally just walk, just cruise on over to the summit. So let's get that rappel all set up and ready to go. It's not often that you have to rappel on your way up a mountain. That's kind of unique. Okay, so I have this belay and rappel device here that I'm clipping into my harness. I could use the Gree Gree, that thing that I did the self belay with earlier. I could use that to rappel down, but I'm going to use this instead. And let's see, let's get all of this tidied up. Of course, I'm gonna have to go back up this when I return from the summit, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, one thing at a time here. Okay, 
let's rappel down. This looks like, oh, that's like a 15 foot rappel, 12, 15 feet, and away we go. This is overhanging here, so it would be tricky, tricky to climb back out this way if you had to, if you had to climb back up this. So that's why I'm leaving the rope here. I can just sort of climb up the rope on the way back out. There we go. Okay. Touchdown, terra firma. So yeah, that really wasn't too bad. You can see with me standing here for scale, how high this last little step is that I had to rappel down. And like I said, I think from here, it's just, it's just a, an easy walk to the summit. Let's find out. Well guys, that was a wild ride. It took me three hours to get up here from the car and about an hour and 45 minutes to get here from the notch. I probably could have shaved 45 minutes off of that just from filming. If, if I weren't filming, uh, I could have done it much faster, but what a wild ride. <laughs> that was, that was something, that was something else. and. Of course, as you would expect, the view up here is just unreal. So remember on the ascent as we were climbing up, there were a couple of uh, there were a couple of towers over here that looked really impressive. Look how high up above that tower we are now. I mean, the thing looks tiny. What a landscape. This is the way I came up. In fact, you can still see the rope. I can see it in person. I don't know how well you can see it in the camera. It's right in the middle there, that little vertical line. That is the rope and the Colorado River is out there. Everything on, on this side of the river is California. Everything on that side of the river is Arizona. Just amazing. And just below the summit, which is there, there are a couple of summit registers. So this one is interesting. This one's been here for a while. Uh, it says Sierra Club on it. And it says, it has a date. Let's see. Let's see, it says Ross Sierra Club, March 1960. So pretty old, unfortunately, I mean, the the summit logs in there are moldy and gross, so I'm not even gonna go in there. There is a newer one right here that I already signed. And turns out this thing gets climbed far less often than I thought. I thought this was a fairly popular summit just because of how interesting it is, you know? But, uh, so I'm climbing this in the beginning of 2023. I'm here in January, 2023. No one climbed it, or at least if they did, they didn't sign the summit register. No one climbed it in 2022, and then three parties climbed it in 2021. So 
pretty rarely climbed. I mean, more people have climbed Mount Everest than have climbed this thing. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I could see why. I could see why. Uh, this is not a gimme. This is not a casual summit. This is a very serious mountain. So again, don't do this. I did it so you guys don't have to. A couple other little points of interest I wanted to point out here. Uh, to the east, can you see on the horizon, in the middle, that little nub, that little point, that is Castle Dome or Castle Dome Peak. That is a prominent peak in the Kofa Mountains over in Arizona. Quartzite, Arizona, if you know where that is, is over here somewhere. It's kind of at the northern end of the, the Kofa Range. And then to the west, I can see the dunes. These are the Algodonas Dunes or the Imperial Dunes out there. You can see that kind of band of, of light colored sand running right across the middle. Those are a popular off-roading venue. And then yesterday, when I was messing around, like climbing that little volcano that was all over here. This is the Cargo Muchacho range. And so I think that's all the business we have up here on the summit, uh, except of course we need to retrace our steps, namely go back up the rope on this side and then go across the, the little ridge and then go down the rope on the other side. Once you've done that, we're kind of home free. You know, it's just ladders and, and ledges and ramps. Uh, but this is, the, this is the final crux that we have to do here. So let me get all packed up. I think I'll have a snack too, and then we'll get back to business. We are back at the rope, and so how does one climb back up a rope if you're not just, you know, hand over handing it? Well, that's where these things come in. This is called an ascender. And it just latches onto the rope right here. There are these little teeth, these little teeth on this cam here. And that makes it so that it can slide up the rope, but not down. And so between that and the Gree Gree, which I'm using as sort of a second ascender, this will be attached to my harness down here. And then I'll use this to go up the rope. And then I'll be connected to both the Grigri and the Ascender. And um, I'll be using, this as kind of a foot stirrup. So I'll put my foot in here and then I can push off. And uh, anyway, between, between these two things, that's how I'll be going up the rope. So basically I'm transferring my weight from one of these things to the other. When my weight is on the Grigri, I move the ascender up. Then when my weight is on the ascender, I move the Grigri up. Almost to the top here. And that is that. So now I'm going to pull up this end of the rope. Don't need this over here anymore. Also don't need the ascender anymore. So let's take that off. And I don't need the Grigri anymore either. So let's take that off. Okay, so I pulled up the rope from over there, that side of the rope that I just climbed up and I undid the, uh, the where the rope was clipped to that single bolt over there. And I've made the anchor over here. So there are these two bolts here, if you remember. Uh, this is right above that spot where I climbed up, where I self belayed Two bolts here, and then I found that third bolt like way over there. Uh, I had this this piece of cord, so I'm, I'm gonna leave this here. And uh, I, I've connected that lone bolt over to this other series of bolts here. So now we have three bolts, which is good because these are all kind of crusty old quarter inch bolts. Uh, and uh, I've doubled the rope over. So if you can see, the rope is looped like this. And so I'm now going to use 
this this device, this rappel device, this is what I used to go down when I rappelled over there. The reason this has two slots in it, one, two, is that you can put two sides, the two sides of the rope through it. And so I'm gonna do that, and then I'll rappel down, kind of putting equal amount of weight on either side of the rope using this thing. And then once I get back down to the notch, I can pull one side of the rope. And so that'll, uh, as I pull that, then the other end of the rope will slip through here, fall back down to me, and so I can retrieve all of my rope. The first step over the edge is always a little bit of a leap of faith. But we're good. All right, so this is where that little crux climbing section is, that, that hardest part. Let me just move over to the right here. And once again, we are at terra firma, we have landed. Sometimes when you are trying to pull the rope after a rappel, the rope is kind of stuck up there. But if you whip it, that'll loosen it, ideally. And then you just give it one last tug. And the rope comes down. So it'll take me a few minutes to coil this back up. And then I'll put it in the backpack and reverse our course back down through the green arrows, back down through the, uh, the diagonal ramps. What a fun <laughs> adventure. Uh, again, an obstacle course, right? Uh, I think I'm going to stop filming here for this part of the video. Uh, I'll meet back up with you guys somewhere down below, either at the car or at a campsite or something, I don't know, but uh, I want to focus just on getting down safely, getting off this thing, and then we'll uh, wrap this up. And there it is. That is Picacho Peak. I was there just a couple hours ago, standing right on top of that thing. And I found this awesome little road that goes to the top of a ridge. Great views here. The descent was fine. Uh, no real major issues. Took me a little while to figure out at the very top, like the, the very top summit ridge. Took me a little while to figure out how to get back down to where the, the zigzagging ramps are, but you know, I just kept at it, kept looking around, and eventually found the right spot. Uh, the problem is that GPS didn't doesn't work super well up there um, because you know those those ramps were so tight and and you know GPS doesn't work well in slot canyons, for example, and it also doesn't work well uh, when there are lots of cliffs around. And so it wasn't super precise. I did record my route on the way up, but. Uh, you know, following it on the way down wasn't super helpful because the track is just all over the place. Anyway, it's 3.45. I have about two hours of daylight left, and I'm tired, as I'm sure you guys can understand. Uh, and so I think I'm just going to end the video here. Um, I'm going to go find a campsite somewhere in this area. Probably, well, if not the exact same spot I camped at last night, a similar spot. So... Know, somewhere around here. I like I like this area. There, there aren't too many people out here, and uh, it's it's beautiful. I like this. Uh, you might look at this and think that is a hellscape, <laughs> but for me, I like it. I think it's I think it's great. And then I think in the morning I'm gonna head into Yuma, get some more groceries, and then continue on with the adventures from there. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's adventure. Again, this is a dangerous or that is a dangerous mountain. If you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but if you've got a couple buddies who, uh, who are familiar with climbing and rope work and all that good stuff, then that was awesome. I had a great time. Uh, I like adventures like that. I like summits like that, where it's not just, it's not just a walk up, you know, um, there is some thinking involved. There's, there's a puzzle to, to put together and that has always appealed to me. So if that appeals to you too, then awesome. I'd say give that mountain a try. Hopefully this video, uh, 
was still <laughs> enjoyable for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.